this video is showing you how to do the graph for the antacid lab. This is last year's results. They were using pH meters, which didn't really work, and that's why their results are all over the place. You guys are using indicators. My results with indicators usually always work, so you probably have a lot better results than this class had. Also, notice here, for the water, it turned acidic after one drop. I, I told you don't multiply this by 6.25, it'll give you a false answer. For Galviskin, it actually should have turned yellow when you added the indicator because it actually has an acid as an inactive ingredient. So that I put in usually to make students figure out why the heck does it turn yellow instantly? And most students don't bother looking at the inactive ingredients realizing it has acid. I actually can't use Alka-Seltzer for the same reason. It has vitamin C, which is acidic, and it has in it aspirin, which is acidic. So the first thing we need to do is average everything. Excel is very easy to do averages. And I'm going to highlight the row. I'm going to go to formula, I'm going to go to auto sum, click on that average. Now. I'm lazy. I don't want to do that every single time. So I'm going to just hi click, highlight that, control C. I'm going to then click on there, scroll down to there, control V, and it fills it in automatic. Excel is actually a wonderful program once you learn how to use it. Until then, it's the most frustrating program in the whole wide world. Now the reason why we want averages is we're doing bar graphs. We're seeing the average results all six or seven groups got. So we have our averages. Now I want a bar graph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight my first one. I am going to go to insert. I am going to click to column, not bar, even though it is a bar graph. And you could pick either the 2D column, 3D, or the cylinder. Those are cute, but I'm being nice and letting you do the cylinder if you want anyways. And click column. And I get that. And not surprising, nothing is shown because it's such a low number. So I am going to first change that. I am going to right click. That is option click for Mac users. Select data. I want to edit the name. And the series name is going to be Gaviskin. Now I'm going to add a series. The series name is going to be Pepsin AC. And my series value is, make sure you erase the row first, and then click OK. I am going to add a series. Uh, and this time I'm going to add Pepto Bismol. Oops. So I'm going to put Pepto. I'm going to erase that, go over there, and click on that. Finally, I have what looks like a graph. Then I have to actually move everything out of the way because this is now in my way. So I'm going to scroll over here, scroll down a little bit. My next one is Rolaid, so again, right click, option click for Mac users, select data, add. Rolaids and click on the Rolaids number. Next, you get the idea, Tums, go over there, click on Tums, and lastly, my unknown, and our control which is water. So I'm going to do what control and the purpose of this was actually proving these antacids are actually absorbing it because water turns acidic after the first drop and click on one. So I have my graph now. You could expand and the graph by grabbing on to this right handle right there. Now one big problem with this graph it does not have the units right here. So I 
am going to go up here. I am going to select this one because I want an x-axis label, a y-axis label, I mean x and y, and my little chart there. So it actually says antacid there, so I don't really need to do that title. And drops. absorbed. Now I could also put a title on it. So I click that one and the chart title is Effectiveness of Store-Bought Antacids. And that is your graph right there. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you very much.